there are numerous accounts of the brutality with which Che Guevara ran his prison. A Cuban political prisoner who was sent to La Cabana remembered when a boy between the ages of 12 and 14 was thrown into the prison because he tried to prevent his father's execution. The boy was brought in front of the firing squad the same day. A former prisoner recalled, we simply couldn't believe they'd murder him. Then we saw Che Guevara unholstering his pistol. He put the barrel to the back of the boy's neck and blasted. The shot almost decapitated the young boy. During the Cuban Revolution, Carlos Lazo, a Cuban Air Force lieutenant serving under Batista, managed to acquire Che Guevara's notebooks and diaries after scattering Che and his guerrillas. The documents found by Lazo vastly differed from what Castro's regime published, as you can imagine. While historians rely on Lazo's documents, most of Che Guevara's biographers stick to the information provided by the Cuban government. In fact, John Lee Anderson, the author of what is considered the Bible on Che's life, wrote his book under the supervision of Castro's regime and often used Cuban agents as sources of information. The thousands of Cuban exiles in the U.S. were ignored by both media and biographers. On January 24, 1959, shortly after entering Havana, Shea arranged for 3,000 books to be publicly burned. As it turned out, those books belonged to Cuba's Anti-Communist League, a private research organization who accumulated information for 250,000 Latin American communists, agents, and KGB contacts. So the reason for the burning was less censorship and hiding uh, the agents of uh, communism. Yes, that came in helpful later in Cuba. His violent side was already showing when he started organizing rock fights between warring butters. Ernesto Senior recalled that his son would get into frequent fistfights with his butter rivals and would become uncontrollable with rage if he felt he had been unjustly reprimanded or punished. According to one of his childhood friends from Alta Gracia, young Shea earned the nickname Fast Rooster when he, in the middle of having dinner with his friends, forced a servant girl to climb onto the table and had sex with her. After he finished says the friend, he got rid of the poor devil and continued eating as if nothing had happened. So, I mean, just take a moment and picture this, that you're having, as a mid-teens, you're having dinner with some friends, and a servant girl is basically thrown onto the table, is raped, is thrown off the table, and then the rapist sits down and just continues to eat as if nothing had happened. While few died in combat, countless corpses trailed after the rebels' victories. Che Guevara kept executing captured soldiers and anyone suspected of supporting Batista. Damn, but Che has drowned this city in blood, recalled his comrade Camilio Sinfuegas about the city of Santa Clara, which the rebels captured on January 1st, 1959. Seems that on every street corner there's the body of an execution victim. While few died in combat, Countless corpses trailed after the rebels' victories. Che Guevara kept executing captured soldiers and anyone suspected of supporting Batista. Damn, but Che has drowned this city in blood, recalled his comrade Camilio Sinfuegas about the city of Santa Clara, which the rebels captured on January 1st, 1959. Seems that on every street corner there's the body of an execution victim. He wrote, he went into convulsions for a while and was finally still. Now his belongings were mine. I'd like to confess, Papa, at that moment, I discovered that I really like killing. In an article for the Independent Institute, Alvaro Vargas Losa writes, 
This camp was the precursor to the eventual systematic confinement starting in 1965 in the province of Camagüe of dissidents, homosexuals, AIDS victims, Catholics, Jehovah's Witnesses, Afro-Cuban priests, herded onto buses and trucks, the unfit would be transported at gunpoint into concentration camps organized on the Guanahasibibis mold. Some would never return. Others would be raped, beaten, or mutilated, and most would be traumatized for life, as Nestor Almendros's wrenching, wrenching documentary Improper Conduct showed the world a couple of decades ago. The man ordered the mass murder of homosexuals. Can I get a hell no? The Black Book of Communism, a joint effort by French scholars who documented the human cost of communism in the 20th century puts the number of people executed by Shays firing squads in the first year after the revolution at 14,000, which is the equivalent of over 3 million executions in the United States based on population figures. This is the man loved by Nelson Mandela, admired by Christopher Hitchens. Remember, Christopher Hitchens had huge problems, huge problems with Mother Teresa but licks the eyeball-dripping, blood-soaked boots of this mass murderer. Three million Americans slaughtered by a mass murderer. And can you imagine people wearing the T-shirts of this monster? Since we're targeting Macy's, Gimbel's, Bloomingdale's, and Manhattan's Grand Central Terminal train station with 500, with 500 kilos of TNT. They were planning to set off all that explosive power the day after Thanksgiving. For comparison, Al-Qaeda's 2004 Madrid attacks used a total of 100 kilos of TNT. So, when you see pictures of Che Guevara, uh, he's a complete terrorist, bombing and destroying innocent civilians far worse than Al-Qaeda, far worse than Osama bin Laden. On February 18th, 1965, the MB FBI and the NYPD cracked another terrorist plot that Shea hatched with the help of the Black Liberation Army. Raymond Wood, a black NYPD cadet, managed to infiltrate the organization and uncover a plot to blow up the Statue of Liberty, the Liberty Bell, and the Washington Monument. If Shea's plan was successful, he could have triggered a nuclear war between the United States and the Soviets, who backed Cuba. So... Kind of a dangerous, deranged, and evil bastard. The world's most wanted terrorist, Ilish Ramirez Sanchez, also known as Carlos the Jackal, was trained in one of Shea's guerrilla camps. In an interview he gave after 9-11, Sanchez claimed, Bin Laden has followed a trail I myself blazed. I follow news of the September 11th attacks on the U.S. nonstop from the beginning. I can't describe that wonderful feeling of relief. <laughs> 